CataractCoach.com. Rather than chop, learning vertical chop. This is a vertical slash combo chop technique. It's pretty good. And here's some good pearls. Now, first thing you notice is, wow, that's a honking pterygium. Big pterygium here. You may want to remove that ahead of time because that's undoubtedly inducing some sort of astigmatic issue here in the cornea. And it's going to be a little bit more challenging to get accurate lens calcs. So I would prefer to remove that trigium ahead of time, let the eye heal up and stabilize for a few months, and then come back. Now that main incision, look at it. It got stained by the blue dye. It's too avascular. It's not nicking the limbal vessels at all. So I need you to revise that incision. Next time, do a better incision. Starting off the rexus here with a cystotome and now fixating the eye. And let's see our rexus going around. So, so far, so good. And again, when you're a young doctor, the tripan blue dye can certainly help you to visualize the capsule rex, but do keep in mind it can make the capsule a little bit less elastic. So it looks like a reasonable rex is okay to come out of the eye if you need to, but I try to stay in the eye and just complete it. And there's a completed rex, it's probably close to five millimeters, some hydro dissection here. Now, eyes in pretty reasonable position, not the, my favorite draping here. You see, look at all the particulate matter in the tear film. And then you can see that the eyelid margin is not sequestered. There's no plastic drape over it. So all the secretions from those eyelid glands are just coming right in our tear film here. So not ideal. All right, thinning up the anterior cortex. Here's a sharp chopper. That's a vertical style chopper. Buzzing with the phaco probe and the chopper going in vertically towards the optic nerve and now split. Nope, not quite. And then split apart. Look where the phaco probe is, though. That's not a great position because that's not what you want. You want to place it more subincisional, not in the center of the nucleus, or in this one, it's even distal to the center of the nucleus. It's going to make it a lot harder. You get these only these baby little chops there. You want to have a wider separation of the two instruments to have more chopping. But again, see, look, very close together, the two chopper and the, the um, phaco tip, so you're not getting great chops here. This is the problem. This is why you're struggling. This is why it doesn't look so easy and you're, you're fighting it a little bit. All the chops are so tiny. You want the chop to be ideally, your first chop, the entire diameter of the nucleus. At a minimum, let's have our chop be a radius. But look at these chops. These mini chops are at best half a radius of the nucleus. And that's just not going to be efficient. So it's so many different chops are needed here. Again, a little bit of uh, fingers coming in the view there. So you want to avoid doing that. Again, I'm proud of you for sending the video in and you're seeking advice to become a better surgeon. So, so far, what have we learned in this case? Number one, I would have done the trigium surgery first and waited a few months for the cornea to stabilize. You get better lens calcs there, better accuracy, better refractive outcome. Second thing, I didn't like that main incision. It's too avascular for me. Third, the rexus was okay, but I think you need to improve that rexus a bit. Hydrodissection was fine. The chopping, positioning of your instruments. The phaco probe should be more in the sub-incisional space, and there should be a bigger gap between the phaco tip and the chopper tip. And you'll achieve much nicer chops that way instead of having to do so many of these little baby chops. Again, ideal chop is the entire radius, or even better, diameter of the nucleus. If you have one chop and split the nucleus into halves, uh, by definition, you have the whole diameter. But at the minimum, let's get a radius of a chop. And so radius of the nucleus. So there's the last piece coming up. Nicely, good control there. You can see good AC stability. Chamber stability is very nice. And pieces are coming out. So definitely vertical chop is a good technique. Oh, the surgeon's now switched over to a different lighting mode. With these um, digital microscope systems, you can change the lighting to help highlight the cortex here. That's an interesting thing. Of course, the master of that is Lukan Mishev, who really has an amazing video setup and has really mastered the art of all these light filters for both anterior segment and retina surgery. Here's coming in with a bimanual IA, clean up all that cortex, and that's coming out pretty nicely. It's a nice case, don't get me wrong. I think you can improve more. And again, the one thing driving me nuts is your instruments touching those eyelashes the whole time. You gotta get the eyelashes out of the way, get the lid margin sequestered. It's gonna have a better outcome for your patient. Less risk of endophthalmitis, in my opinion, and uh, it's also just easier to operate with that clean tear film without all the particulate matter. Here comes the IOL. Let's see, placing on the capsule bag. I like to see the lens going in because it gives me an idea as to the size of the rexus. So single piece acrylic lens, get that dialed in here. And you can see yeah, it's about a five millimeter rexus. So good job here. Keep up the good work. Remember, let's do better draping, better incision, and definitely a better chop. 
I'm going to show you a video tomorrow. It's going to be a fantastic horizontal chop technique, but it'll get the points across. Thanks for watching.